Radio. This is Advanced SQL, and it's the continuation of our discussion of recursion in SQL. Right. So uh, already in the beginning, I told you that there are two variants of the recursive common table expressions: the union variant, the set-based variant that we have discussed up to now, and the bag variant, the union all variant that will will that we will look at a bit closer now. Once we have both. Uh, on the table, then we have everything on the table. There is nothing else that comes um, uh, uh, additionally into the mix to implement recursion in SQL. That's all there is to it. So uh, let's get the union all variant out of the way and we are ready to just run a series of very cool examples. Okay, so uh, with recursive in the union all variant. So semantically, there is nothing new happening here. It's just the with recursive common CTE that we have seen on the slides before. And in a few minutes, we will see it in the editor again. So nothing new to be learned there. Of course, instead of the union separator, we will use the union all separator to... Um, to uh, uh, separate the base case query from the recursive case query, the Q loop query that uh, both together make up our recursive common CTE. Right. So what's the what's the semantic difference if we work with the union all variant? Well, let's look at the operation semantics. Let's look at the equivalent formulation of the semantics in terms of either this imperative program or its functional equivalent here on the right hand side. Let's look at the uh, imperative version first again. Everything looks as we've uh, already seen it, right? So it's just this uh, iterate procedure that we are now defining. Well, it's now the iterate all procedure so that we can both tell both apart. And of course, the parameters in this procedure, it's a higher order procedure in a sense, are the recursive and the base case query parts that we are working with. All right. Right. So, uh, of course, also in the union all variant, the Q0, the base case query, is evaluated once and it makes for the first bits, for the first rows in our overall result R. You see, we start initializing R here and then later on we return R here in this part of the query. Again, R will be the overall result of the union all variant, which we can then refer to in the post-processing part in the very last bit of our recursive common table expression to produce the final result. Okay, uh, again, we will use variable T to capture those rows that have been produced in the last iteration. So before we enter the loop here, Q0 has produced the last rows. All right. Why there are indeed rows being produced, okay, we will enter the loop and perform this part of the computation in iteration. If there is nothing new to be added to the result, if the last iteration has returned zero rows, then this is the stop condition and we will return what we have accumulated so far. Uh, so if there is something uh, uh, that the last iteration could contribute, then we will use th these rows to evaluate our recursive query part, Q loop here. Okay, so this is this part we have seen that before. Okay, now the difference starts. Everything, everything returned by Q loop is the makes up for the rows that will be fed into the next iteration. In the set base variant here, we were removing all those results that we have seen so far. At, if we have seen any row produced by QLoop that we have seen so far already, it would be removed. All right. Not so in the union all variant. So everything produced in the last iteration will be fed into the next iteration. Of course, we will also add the rows that have been produced in this iteration, T, we will add them to the overall result and accumulate the overall result, all right? So everything produced in this iteration will be fed back again into ourselves unless this uh, would have been the empty set of rows. If T is empty, then of course 
no point in further iterating here and we would leave the loop. Okay, so uh, no removal of stuff that we have seen so far. This also means that at this particular point inside the routine, there's actually no need to really keep a memory of what we've seen so far, right? The set based variant needed the intermediate result R at this particular point just to recall which rows have been seen so far and to remove them from the, uh, from the intermediate result T. Not so in this case. Um, Actually, there is no need. Actually, there would be no need to build up this intermediate result R here. We actually wouldn't need any temporary memory to construct R. We could immediately emit, immediately emit all the rows that we have computed, the Q0 rows, of course. We could just emit them or send them to our uh, consumer, to, to the consumer of our recursive common CTE, right? Uh, here at this point, we could just emit the rows T that have just been produced and ship them to our consumer. So uh, there is no need to build this intermediate result R here, right? Because we don't need it to remove uh, anything that we've seen so far. But uh, maybe it's cleaner to think in terms of uh, overall result that is being accumulated in the variable R that is then being returned in one shot. But uh, just as an implementation node, implementing the union all variant has its performance promises, right? Because there's mm, there is no uh, set difference going on here. All right, so let's leave that quickly. And uh, well, there is no intermediate memory needed actually. So this is uh, what's meant by this uh, note below here. But uh, well, maybe it's cleaner to think about the semantics in this particular way or maybe in the functional way of things you see that where the set based variant had the set difference operation here in this particular spot nothing like this is to be seen here in the uh, recursive call in the functional version of the union or variant of course everything else like their stopping criterion and so on remains the same okay right uh, as you can see, as a final point, um, we are indeed in the bag semantics here, in the union all semantics. So everything that has been produced, everything that has been produced in the last iteration will actually find its way into the result or could be emitted immediately. There is no duplicate elimination going on here. This is true bag semantics. Right, so this would be the semantics of the union all variant. And uh, let's explore in the terminal, what are the consequences for our homemade generate series and the variants that we have uh, looked at in the previous video. Here we are again. So now indeed, this is our homemade generate series, right? And it's the union all variant now. It's the back semantics variant now. Okay, so we have to keep in mind that the, uh, the rules that we have just described on the previous slide, they are uh, applied now. Okay, so as before, we start our generate series with a value of one here, right? That would be the starting value. And of course, it will be part of the result. That value one will be seen here in this, in the intermediate table, right? Uh, so, well, let's, let's, uh, let's um, disable this complication here that uh, is only here to illustrate the backbase semantics. All right, so we would evaluate our query over this uh, one row table that contains only the one. We would check this ending condition here, right? We would then generate the next row in the result, okay? This will be part of the overall result. It will be added to R, and it will also define the input of our next iteration, okay? So no consideration of uh, have we seen this result already or some no, nothing like this is uh, is performed here in the union all variant. Also, should we add duplicates in this iteration, all of the duplicates would be kept. Okay, but uh, looking at this, this should actually perform just like the set based variant in this particular form of the query. I think we should see the same result here. It's just five rows because we have a, a, a maximum uh, range value here or generate series value of five. 
but otherwise this looks like expected. Uh, okay, so this is the union or variant of things. Things look different now if I reactivate this Cartesian product with the two row table here, this literal two row table. Now what this from will generate is indeed a two row table, right? Well, in the first iteration, we are left with a one row table. So this would be a one row table. The Cartesian product would make this into a two row table. Both are going through this filter and both will generate the SI plus one value. As I've just told you, no duplicate elimination is going on. So both values generated here are added to the result and both values are considered the intermediate result of our last iteration. So in the second iteration of our recursive query, the series table will now have two rows, two rows containing two. This will be uh, multiplied with this other two row literal table. So this Cartesian product will in the second iteration of our recursive part will have four rows. The four rows will uh, be filtered. Well, they won't be filtered in this particular case. They will be admitted and we will generate four rows here at this particular point. Okay, those four rows will be added to the result. And uh, well, four rows are being fed into the third iteration of the result and so forth. So I expect I expect the number of rows produced in each of these iterations to double every time double because well, we multiply it with this two row literal table in the from clause in the recursive part. Uh, I think now it makes sense to uh, uh, why I have added this uh, this smaller upper limit here because what we see here as a result will be larger already. So let's see. Okay. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's a larger result. So indeed, in the first iteration we added the we produced the one one time. We produced the two already two times. No duplicates have been removed. We produced the three four times and the four eight times and so on and so on. So all of this adds to two to the power of five to the power of five minus one rows. It's 31 rows that are being produced in this particular variant. A true difference to the union set based semantics variant that we have looked at before. Okay, so uh, well, indeed, we can see we can see how the series table evolves over time. We have looked at this particular uh, tracing variant of the query before in the set base variant of the semantics. Now we are in the all union all in the back base variant of the semantics, and again we add a second column in which we can see the state of the series table in the last after the last, I'm sorry, after the last iteration. So after the iteration of Q0 of the base case query, the series table will only contain one row containing just the value one. Okay, and of course, we will maintain this tracing column while we perform these iterations here. So uh, in the first iteration, this will be a single row table multiplied to yield a two row table. Okay, so this emits two row, two values or two rows, and all of these values are being aggregated into an array of length two. So we should actually see how the length of table series is growing. Okay, so let's see. All right, oh yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, this is indeed a trace of the state of the series table after each iteration. Of course, after Q0, it's just a single row table containing just this one. But in the second iteration, we are emitting this table. Actually, we are emitting it twice, right? We are emitting it twice, but this would be the state of the series table after the first iteration. It contains two identical rows containing the value two. And then we are up to a table of three rows or of four rows and then uh, of eight rows, I'm sorry, or then of 16 rows. You see, I've, uh, I've used this particular variant of a function show here because I anticipated that all of these areas that I'm uh, accumulating here 
red get really white. So this show function uh, shows us an abbreviation, an excerpt of the array only, and then the array cardinality. You will find the show function at the very top of this file recursion.sql. Okay, so yeah, because we keep duplicates, this indeed makes a difference here, this multiplication, and we have to be aware of that. Okay, well, now it's quiz time again. And quiz time means that uh, if you see this video and you think that you have uh, interesting comment or any comment at all on this particular uh, query or the question that is associated with this, please open a thread in the forum in the uh, advanced SQL forum, post whatever you like there. Please don't hesitate to open a thread to add to an existing thread, to open up an entirely new thread. This is all about discussion and participation. It's, it's crazy and difficult enough to communicate with you guys during this, uh, during this pandemic. So please use the forum and dump anything you see appropriate here. All right, so just to make that particular piece clear. So what I brought with me here is the query that we've already explored in the union-based variant. So in the set-based variant of our recursive CTE. It's the variant where I also multiply the series table that we see in each iteration with a two-row table that uh, contains the values 0 and 1. And I refer to the zeros and 1s uh, in terms of this column name delta. All right. And then I would use that delta and add this to the, the, the series value that we are generating. I will add the zero here one time and I would add the one here one time. All right, so in the case of the set by semantics, uh, the CTE with union, not union all, with union, we saw that this had no influence on the outcome of the overall query because, uh, well, adding zero here to SI was producing a result that we have already seen before and the set based semantic would remove that. Not so in the back based semantics. So this has an impact on the result of this particular query. I will not run this query now to spoil the quiz fun here, but I would like you to, well, explore and play with this particular query, look at the result and, uh, uh, and try to understand how the result, uh, how the result is uh, uh, being constructed. And please in the forum explain why, why you see this particular result. And uh, so what are the consequences of using this delta value here in the back based semantics? Please try to find a uh, understandable, reasonable explanation of the behavior of this particular query. There's one tip here. If you have difficulties in exploring and investigating the result of this particular query, just recall that there is something in SQL that's called limit. Okay, looking forward to what you can up with, uh, come up with here and your explanations. Uh, please don't hold back and post to the forum. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, now explore several interesting use cases with you uh, uh, in the discussion of recursion in, in SQL. The use cases will get more interesting uh, as we go through the chapter and I'm, I'm, I'm really thrilled to do that with you. Okay, see you then. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.